Hey fun fans, before we get to this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of you who have been spreading the word of fun to help us stay Lob Light Independent through your donations, bits, and subscriptions, and also to the sponsors of this segment, PTC and Striker. PTC currently has the Robots to the Rescue Challenge going on where you can earn a share of $7,000 for your team by designing a robot that helps solve a current world problem at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. And Striker is looking for first and fun fans to join their team because they want to help support you in your first journey. Help develop solutions for current and future problems like the new emergency relief bed. Get details on how to join their team at careers.strykr.com forward slash first. But that moves to our top five. And starting off our top five, we have team 479 Tendy Men of Casey, Ryan, and Alex. Parker, could you kick us off? Sure. Um, this robot was robust. Um, you you would be very challenged to uh, break this, and if you built this, you would probably have something that like worked. Um, it was ambitious. They had a kind of single virtual four bar thing going on. I think I can't remember if it's actually four bar or not. Uh, that's a virtual right. four bar. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was and with kind of machines like hubs and stuff like that, uh, which was all very. Uh, very kind of cool, but it was well engineered. Um, and there was, I see in one of these renders, there's a, their shooter flywheels have kind of presumably 3D printed covers that go around them uh, as kind of a standoff unit. Uh, the whole thing was, was just really cool. Uh, their ball feed seemed pretty good. It didn't really rely on any kind of loose balls. They were all controlled through an S-shaped hopper. Um, not really a hopper, but, uh, and, and then they had uh, all these kind of things so yeah i think it was very well thought out and the engineering uh, maybe not the strategy uh the strategy was good but it didn't stand out to me as well as the uh just the the kind of raw talent that went into designing it yeah brian yeah so i think a lot of the same as what uh parker just said is true for me i thought it was like probably one of the most robust robots that we saw so i really appreciate a robot that i can confidently say can withstand an FRC season when I see it, and this was definitely that. Um, you know, I thought that one thing that you can't really see that I have in my notes is the spiral that they did on the elevator for the cable. Um, that was just like a detail that I, I think I saw one other team do it. Um, but just like the details like that are the small things, and this robot really took that to the next level. Um, I do worry about the balls getting through the S shape, but you know I can't say that definitively, so I didn't really hold that too much against them. Um, but I really liked uh, the intake and just the overall look of this robot was something that was pretty good. And then just one other thing, you know, I think I've said this like three times tonight, but the radio was under a lot of stuff on this robot, very low, um, and there's plenty of spots to put it above. So I wish that uh, maybe they could have brought that radio up a little bit. Yep, yeah. Matt. Yeah, man, this robot was, like, beefy. You you could <laughs> tackle this thing, and it would continue <laughs> to do its job on the field, and I love that. Um, I think it's pretty easy, especially in a, in a purely CAD competition, to get carried away with carving material out just for the, you know, for the show. Um, but, you know, the, there was clearly a lot of thought that was given to where this robot needed to stay strong uh, in the way that it was constructed. My favorite part of this robot was actually the arm for picking up weight plates. Uh, it was mentioned it was a virtual four bar. It was constructed with carbon fiber. I liked it a lot. Um, that is you know, a type of design we've seen pretty successfully uh, in FRC coming from 971 and also has been successfully used on a lot of industrial robots. Uh, so very cool. I really enjoyed looking at this one. Uh, Mr. Ryan? I was wondering if the, the people who designed this had worked with bicycles because the, the carbon fiber arm on this reminds me of the kind of uh, bicycle tubing work that you'd find with the, um, with the down tube and stuff like that. Just the, the, the welding of the carbon fiber to the aluminum, probably uh, it's really, really solid. I also like the, the way the, uh, the weight is actually handled with this machine. Um, that's a really solid way of holding the weight. So everything else, just what these guys have said. I know we're short on time, but I would like to chime in. And the uh, designer in chat is clarifying, and I kind of remembered that it isn't just a four bar. It's actually a two duff arm with actu with the actuators in the base and then a cable for the, the wrist. So it's mm -hmm. it's actually kind of 
cooler. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to <laughs> chime in and say that. Sorry that we got that wrong, but there's a lot of things to keep track of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That moves us to our fourth ranked team, which is team 448, the Gearheads, made up of FRC team 2813. Brent, could you kick us off? Yeah, I thought that just overall, I think that we're going to notice as we go through the render, one thing for people on the stream to look out for is the detail on this robot. I don't think that I've seen anything else like it in a FRC CAD model before. They CADed the pneumatic tubing, they literally everything. They even had the time to do the little squiggly decorative, uh, like art looking thing on the top, which I thought was just kind of a cool touch. Um, you know, I th thought that overall this robot was very good. I really liked the active centering mechanism and the intake. Um, the spindexer, you know, I wasn't too sure how much I really had confidence in that um, because just footballs, which are not uniform um, shapes and going through a uh, spindexer, you know, they could get pushed one way or the other. Um, don't know how I feel about that, but I really liked the shooter and just the overall theme of this robot. You know, the suction cup on the back, I'm not going to harp too long on it since we're short on time. Um, but, you know, I wish that we would have seen even maybe just a bigger suction cup on the back. But overall, the detail on this was insane. Um, really loved it. Um, and, like, even I noted that I'm sure the other teams did this as well, but they have even pool noodles catted inside of their bumpers, which was, like, kind of <laughs> crazy. All right, Matt? Yeah, super insane levels of detail coming through on this robot. I couldn't believe what I was looking at when I pulled it open. Um, I really couldn't quite believe this robot was going to do weights the way that they claimed it would, uh, with a single suction cup, with a what I gauge to be a relatively underbuilt joint uh, and arm on the back of the robot. Um, but man, the, the thought given to routing wires, to pneumatics, uh, just totally blew me away. Super, super well executed. Yeah. Mr. N? Catting is fantastic. I feel sad that they won't be able to pick up weights. It's, they, I don't know, maybe they can, but it just, <laughs> this, the single suction cup thing is just, is probably just not going to work, um, which is sad because this robot deserves to be built. It's it's awesome. Parker? Yeah, I uh, was catting most of these and just listening to music and, and, and being silent. And and this was the first robot. When I saw it, I kind of like leaned back and just said, whoa, to no <laughs> one. Just I was I was so impressed by it. Uh, and uh, nothing nothing really more has to be said besides, yeah, the the mechanisms weren't the strongest, and I think that is maybe the only reason they're they're uh, not uh, not like first or second place is that the, the the concepts with a bit more tweaking would be great, but the catting is just phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's going to bring us into our top three. Starting off, we have Team Five Ninety Seven Numhot, made up of Clayton and Ethan. Matt, could you kick us off? Absolutely. First off, incredible name. Secondly, like, there's a lot to unpack when you first start looking at this robot. It's an ambitious concept that's really well done. There's a huge amount of emphasis that was given to designing for manufacture uh, and how their billet plates were being designed, how the linkages were being designed. My favorite part of this robot actually is the uh, collapsible uh, tube extending arm thing that they had on the front of the robot, or yep. back of the robot, maybe. Um Absolutely loved that. This was also one of uh, the Catathon teams we had for this game that submitted a phenomenal uh, tech brochure showing off not only their robot, but really the intent behind uh, every decision that they had made in creating it. And I think everybody really should give the chance to uh, take a look at it. Um, but I, I really especially loved that telescoping arm that you guys can see on the screen right now. Yeah. Mr. Ryan? Yeah, that's beautiful. I also agree that it was the main feature that I loved. It was the telescoping arm. Having just gone through the process of manufacturing one of those for our uh, 2020 robot, I was super impressed with that part of it. I love it. It's a beautiful, beautiful machine. Oh, my gosh. Parker? I'm really glad that uh, Mr. N said that. Uh, I was a bit concerned because I do know the people on this team, and I was probably a bit harsher on them, trying to compensate for any uh, bias that I had. And I'm glad that Mr. N, who, who doesn't really uh, agrees with how just fantastic this, uh, this this robot is, even the kind of half pocketing on some of the points where it was needed, and then full pocketing uh, elsewhere, and the kind of 
the 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 shooter and the the telescope all uh all was all was pretty uh pretty awesome so the half pocketing was awesome too i love that yeah. as well i didn't see that in any other robot here and no. that can be very effective when used right yep Frank. Yeah, I thought that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, what separates the middle of the field in the competition from the gray robots like uh, that we've seen the past five robots um, is really just like with this robot, you cannot like you show this robot to someone and you don't know that it was made by two separate people um, because it's packaged insanely well. Everything flows well together. Um, and just the detail, as I mentioned on the pocketing, was insane to me. It makes this robot look really, really nice. Um, honestly, and the telescoping arm I thought was just a great touch um, as well, and how the intake folds in so well and so cleanly I thought that that was super nice um, overall, you know, I don't have too much else to add that the other judges haven't said but a great robot Bumper pins, bumper quick release pins Yep, That was awesome Alright Brent I, I just went Oh, sorry, <laughs> next I move us to our number two team, and that is team 356 Blaze It, made up of Julia and Tyler. Parker, could you kick us off? Sure. Um, the detail on this one is also exquisite. Uh, the uh, packaging is, it's dense. It's like you can't see through the robot when you're looking at it. It's just, there's so much stuff in the way, and it's all for a purpose and all effective. It used suction. And I think uh, what's, what, I, what I'm noticing is that a, a, a lot of the teams at the very high end did. And I think that despite that, the rest of the robot is just really good. And I think we're judging these robots and um, kind of maybe this is pointing out that the, the robots that we've really liked have put a lot of focus into a single mechanism. And then the, the suction maybe doesn't have as much detail or something and is kind of put off to the side. That's not necessarily... You know, a, a bad thing. A, a robot that's focused on footballs and scoring them really well uh, can can be effective. Uh, and so, uh, with that said, yeah, this one is overall pretty awesome. I'll let the other judges <laughs> cover some comments instead of me hogging it all. Brent. Yeah, I thought this robot was honestly very, very impressive. Um, just as he mentioned, the detail with the wiring. Another thing that I really appreciated with this is um, I saw a lot, um, a concerning amount of exposed Robo Rios um, throughout my judging, and that's a kind of a concern to me because if a metal um, shaving, which you know those are all over the field, um, get into the Robo Rio, you know you can be out for a competition. Um, potentially um that's happened to my team before um in finals or semifinals and we we're out um so i really like that and that just the overall detail of it i thought that one thing that i really noticed with this robot is whenever i was dragging footballs around um, through the systems is that there were very little um points where a ball could fall through or i wasn't confident that a ball would go to where they were intending on it going everything was really well captured um, and I was really confident with this indexing system. Um, it looked really nice. Um, just I think that the shooter maybe was a bit too simplistic, but that's just a small thing that uh, I noticed. All right, Matt. Yeah, so I'm looking at my notes right here, and, and it actually just says one thing. It says, this one right here, officer. Uh, I absolutely <laughs> loved the way this robot was done. Uh, the level of detail is phenomenal. It had an extremely creative ball indexing mechanism. Uh, really, I, I was struggling to find anything I didn't like about it. Uh, and one thing I, I did want to call out that's not purely about the, the you know, design of the robot uh, was that this robot was entirely done in on shape to include routing for like wiring and tubing. That's not something I've ever seen teams do with on shape before. I'm not personally an on shape user. Uh, but this robot made me rethink what cat burger might use. It was that good. Wow. That's a good point Mr. for people. Yeah, no joke. Um, I I was poo pooing on shape with my team uh, last year, <laughs> and I'm uh, I'm reconsidering that from this one. Again, it's the end uh, use parts, the the suction cups on the end of, of one side, and the the shooter wheels on the end of the other side seem like the least thought out parts of this robot. Everything else looks fabulous. Um, 
I love the I love the pocketing. I love the webbing, really, because uh, normally I'm used to seeing that kind of stuff done on gearboxes, and they just did it to the whole frame of the robot on this. Um, looks fabulous. Yeah, and I think all the suction, I think I might release a white paper on this. So get ready to see a white paper on whether these suction cups will actually work with math. Because I don't think anyone <laughs> did the math. I'm going to do the math because after hearing about suction cups 30 times throughout this stream, I, I really want to know. <laughs> yeah. But that'll bring us into our number one team, which is team 631 PDX, made up of Gus and Hansen. Brent, can you kick us off? Yeah, so um, this was my original part of my original judging pool whenever I went through and I was getting close to the end of my judging um, because their team number is so high and I didn't numerically uh, ordered and I was just kind of, you know, I'd seen a lot of the same robots and whenever I opened up the renders of this robot, I was amazed. I was like, oh my, like this is crazy. Um, and I think that even like once we went back and in our judges group chat, I believe it was, um, I forgot who exactly it was, but someone was like, whoa, that's the one right there. <laughs> like that, this is the robot that's going to take it all. They can take, I think that they, whoever it was said that they could take any tourney. Um, so I thought that this robot was absolutely insane. So did the other judges. They'll tell you the same thing. One thing that I really did like was the, um, I'm not sure if a render will be able to show it, um, but they have uh, basically their feed system up to their shooter. Um, they have like the 254 hot dog roller type thing, um, but they're actually angled in. So I think that that gave me a lot, a lot more confidence that the balls would be in the correct orientation that they wanted. Um, very impressive. The elevator just looks insanely packaged. Um, once you get in and are able to look at the gearboxes there, it's insane. And they also had a brake on there too, so that um, the motor, like not all the weight would be on the motor's stall torque. But overall, great robot. Um, definitely deserving of first place. Great job, guys. Matt, what do you think? Wow. Yeah, looking at this robot, I mean, it's unbelievably compact. There's so much going on in a, in a very small space. Um, but what really impressed me was that, you know, they didn't overlook any details in doing so. Uh, these guys really spared no expense on their CAD. They have an energy chain catted into the elevator. There's not a single fastener, chain, belt, you name it, that's been forgotten. Um, this, this was like, of all the robots that I think I looked at was the one that I said, like, Coming out of the machine shop, this robot's going to fit together and it's going to perform well. The one thing I uh, couldn't get sold on was the use of suction for picking up weights. I think that's a pretty common theme that we're hearing tonight. Um, but overall, it was just an absolutely phenomenal robot, and I think it's deserving first place. All right, Mr. Ren. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, so... I would like to see this one in action because I think it would remind me of 971's robot in 2015. Uh, the the movement of the uh, the structure on this. Again, it's so many teams overlooked how heavy these weights are and how much of a moment arm they're going to be putting out there when they pick up a 10 pound weight that's sitting way out in front of their robot. And this one really seemed to to take that into consideration. So the level of detail is extremely high. And it's beautiful, and uh, it's 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 catted perfectly. But the the thought that went into how are we going to deal with these game pieces, and how are we going to get both of these very very different game pieces into a compact product that's that's going to play effectively with both of them, uh, was the part that really sold me on it. So yeah, this is my favorite robot by far. And Parker, end us off. Now. I have uh, loved to rag on the suction cup users uh, through all these hundred teams, uh, <laughs> and with every other robot that we've been critiquing, you know, every other place uh, we've been you know, talking about the robot, talking about what it did well, what it didn't, uh, trying to be you know nice and constructive, and we've been saying, you know, this team has you know this thing it did that kind of well. Uh, their arm was a bit weak. I'm just making this stuff up. Uh, their arm was a bit weak. Their you know drive base was flimsy. There was too much pocketing. Oh, and the suction cup uh, probably won't work. Uh, this team, there is no but. Like the suction cup was probably the weakest point of their design. It was still probably better than a lot, just due to how they did the cup, and and it seemed to be well. But that's it. Full stop. Like all right, they didn't do a, a better grabber, but the rest of the robot, I just cannot critique. And I think that was really what what, what got it here is that uh, I 
don't want to sound like a hypocrite when saying that the suction cups are kind of bad. I still think they they are questionably effective, but there was nothing else that you could really critique about this robot. So just want to clear my name on that, and otherwise, it's fantastic. Yep. All right. Well, congratulations to Team 631 for winning the F4 Catathon Spring Special, and thank you to everyone who has watched. This has been another massive turnout, and really, it, it was massive, and we can't, be, can't wait to be back in the summer for another one. Thank you to all of our judges for your time and dedication. Don't forget that you want more FIRST Robotics in your life, and make sure to hit that follow or subscribe button to fun on both Twitch and YouTube. Let's recognize those who have pledged their support with tips, bits, and subscriptions. Yeah, first I'll just, I think for the winner, I think they get a soundbite, right? <laughs> Perfect. All right, congratulations, <laughs> us, Team uh, 631. Uh, real quick, just go through Red Leader 342, 342 bits. Poofy Jack 254 with five months. Uh, C McBride coming in, 35 months of Tier 2 support. Thanks so much. Uh, and Mathis 4130, uh, gifting out uh, subs. Uh, Fun FTC Nathan, 24 months of support. Raw 1236 uh, with the four months of support. Conal King 865, 15 months of support. Mick Last, 21 months of support. Uh, Owen Cohen, eight months of support. Silverhawk 676, six months of uh, support uh shry kb with a prime sub area uh rn frc 840 with five months of support uh minicam mars with six months of support leon wickham wilson with a prime sub dirt biker 13 months of support uh billy hunter six uh with some uh bits in there and dead boy with some bits as well uh and a couple last shout outs that were redeemed uh through our fun bucks uh system if you don't know about channel points you get points for watching the stream uh so a couple shout outs ph wog uh, just says fun is the best thank you so much for that uh and then uh poofy jacket uh, doing a shout out it says Swerve is OP. Congrats to everyone. So thanks a lot uh, to everybody. Uh, guys, uh, we do need your help to see a lot of live and independent. We appreciate your uh, subscriptions, tips, and bits so we can keep on creating content. And we love doing the Catathon. F4 is a fantastic organization, and I think they deserve a tons of recognition. Uh, so hypes and chat, please. Uh, that would be awesome. And one last shout out from Nettie Neo says he'd shout out the Team 586 for getting first place. Um, I don't think that's correct. Is it? I don't know. Is that the team name? Or what? I don't think that's right. <laughs> oh, slash us, huh? Kappa's in chat, please. All right. But congratulations to all the teams who competed here today. All right. On behalf of myself and the F4 Catathon Planning Committee, I would like to thank all teams for their amazing Catathon creations and to everyone who has viewed or supported the Catathon. Thanks to Fun and our producer, Tyler, for their support and promotion of the screen. We'll see you this summer with another Catathon and right here with more content from First Updates Now. Talk to you then. This video is brought to you in part by PTC. Look, during this time, it's important to look for challenges to keep your skills up and to help your team in fun development. The Robots to the Rescue Challenge can help you accomplish both by designing a robot that solves a real-world problem with a chance to win a share of over $7,000 for your team. Click the link in the description to get started at onshape.com forward slash robots to the rescue. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.